Hello again guys, welcome back to the channel, my name's Our Lad for Set Play Gaming. This is the FC24 Colchester career mode with Owen Coyle and we are in pre-season. I thought I'd start with the wing play tactical vision overlay. You can see there, the towel behind me is to stop the glare off the mirror from the light in the room. And uh, we're going to begin today's episode by having a look at the Youth Academy and then get the three pre-season matches out the way. Let's see how we get on in pre-season. Alright, so we're going to take a look now at the Youth Academy um, of our save at Colchester. And you can see we've got quite a sizable academy already. And the board objective is to bring in three defenders. It doesn't say they have to be centre-backs. Uh, but given sort of the way the centre-backs are set up in our club and the fact that we've got both Mitchell and Lawrence in on loan... That suggests that we should be looking at other centre-backs as well. Whether or not they're going to be good enough to come straight into the side next season, we don't know. Uh, but we're just going to take a quick look now at these uh, players. So the first one, Ruben Hasler, is from Liechtenstein. He actually has a potential of 85. I'm favoured more to keep... Um, his development plan on balanced, simply because... Um, if you mess around with it too much, they just end up going, you know, off off balance with the stats. Um, you can see that his positioning is way behind everything else. His handling's not that great. Kicking, hand, um, kicking, diving, and reflexes are orange. He is only 48 overall. Um, we'll just keep loaning him out, I guess, when he eventually comes up and see what happens with him. There's no. I can't see that positioning ever really catching up with him unless we put him on sweeper keeper. I mean, he does have four-star weak foot anyway. Um, the next guy is Matthias Bauman. Uh, this guy, 80 potential, so again, he could grow into a fairly decent keeper. He's already 17. Um, again, 40 positioning, not great. Really, you want where those technicals are. You want them to be all around the similar level because they're not going to grow faster than the other and it's going to be difficult for that to catch up and the other guy is Nadir Saeed six foot one from Morocco now this guy looks pretty decent um 70 to 90 potential let's have a look and again he's positioning his way behind um this guy you know what we could possibly put him on let's have a look see what sweeper keeper does eight weeks and it's going to boost his kicking and handling See, his handling's already 58. Goalkeeper just does reflexes and diving. Um, so, yeah, it's going to be difficult to get that. Ideally, you want somebody that's got all those things, um, you know, all those attributes should be um, together. They should all be around the sim similar. It's okay if they're one or two points behind, but... To be that far behind is just really bad. Um, so it might be a case of when these guys do eventually get called up, they'll get um, loan listed or transfer listed and then and then and then sold. Uh, this guy Piero Greco can play in midfield and defence. He isn't great going forward and he isn't great defensively either. So it's kind of a bit strange. Um, I've moved him to right wing back. His potential is 67, so he is somebody that can probably play at this level. Um, but he is 17 years of age and 49 overall. Probably will need a loan out. Um, and he does need work, obviously, on his defensive side if he's going to play uh, on the wing. He's actually got 72 curve and 66 free kick accuracy. So, with that, you would have expected him... Uh, to be more of a midfielder than an actual an, an attacking midfielder more than a defensive midfielder but it is what it is Serge Dumbia is 47 rated from Ivory Coast because um, we don't really use defensive midfielders per se I've just moved this guy over to central midfield he has 71 to 91 potential and he's 5 foot 11 Olav Berg 74 to 94 this guy looks really, really good in terms of his overall. Already at 60 rated. 
Um, it does say he can play defensive mid, but as you can see, his defensive attributes are way behind his attacking ones. Um, 76 agility at 5 foot 7 is also quite tasty. Um, 71 free kick accuracy and 70 curve. So this guy is a bit of a dead ball specialist. And then Martino Borges can play anywhere across that midfield three. That's actually pretty good in terms of if we get this guy. This guy looks like he could be a superstar. 83 to 94, that is crazy at this level. And then Nino Dragovic, 72 to 92, left wing and cam. Um, five star weak foot, actually has a trait quick step. Um, again, he is... At the moment, he is 61, so he's already gone up one left wing cam. He's left footed, but we're going to shove him out on the right and try and iron robin him so that he can cut in on his left. And then Mast Markal, I guess, is from Belgium. He is 15, so we can't promote him. But it's 75 to 94, and look at those traits technical, flair, and acrobatic. Um, he is six foot as well. Uh, so. Again, you know, um, a pretty decent start to the academy in terms of you've got um, three players there, Berg, Borges and Dragovic, who even if they only come through and they're a little bit, bit off balance or whatever, we can loan out and see how they do. But if we do bring them through and we're not going to use them, I'd imagine we would get quite a fair bit of money for them. So... Um, you know, they, they, it looks pretty promising. We've just got to kind of get some good results and hold on to our job. We'll check back in with this probably in two or three months' time. So once we start to approach Christmas, we'll jump back in and see how they're getting on. So we begin our pre-season um, with the invitation to the Netherlands to take on three Dutch teams. And the first team that we're taking on is FC Volendam. Now, all three of these teams are um, two-star rated, so they are significantly, slightly better than us. Um, I'm just going to consult my notes here while the highlights play. In this game, we actually played a 5-2-2-1 at the start. Um, we just wanted to sort of see how our favoured formation would go, both in terms of defence and offence. You see here, defensively, Goodman making a stop there and no messing about from the defence. Just huffed it straight out. Don't want to mess about with that. One of the things I noticed in this game, and again this might be a feature of this season, is I found it very difficult to actually pick out the guy in the middle. Um, and that might be because of the formation that Volendam were playing. Um, I don't know whether that's going to be an issue for us when playing this formation. And then as we get to sort of like the 70th minute, we can probably switch to a 5-2-1-2. This formation really only favours the fact that we're using Awara Edwards alongside Chilvers behind the striker. Um, and you can see from those highlights, uh, very little action from us going forward. Uh, so into the second half. You see here Volendam with a lot of the ball and a lot of the chances. But every time they pass it into an area or... Here comes Goodman with the save. Every time they pass it into an area or get close to us, we've always got a man available. Now here we have Yandolo on the left. We're just waiting for that support. In comes Tom Hopper and straight away I like the fact that the keeper was challenged there you know that that bodes well for the future especially with the swinging crosses in to um, quite beastly players uh, we do have a couple of units uh, Hopper's not exactly a slouch at 6-1 himself and then you've got Tolvide and um, Akind who are big boys themselves you did a ball there through from Yandolo to Chilvers I thought for certain that Chilvers was going to hit that first time from the edge of the box. I kind of wish he would have done. So, 73 minutes in, still nil-nil, and basically just looking for something. And up come Volendam, and actually close to scoring there. A quick shot here. Oh, and Coyle trying to still work a few things out with this new team. 
like I said, he prefers to play on the wings. Um, one of the features we have is being able to do a bit of a kick and rush when we have two men up front. And you can see it was almost effective there. Um, I think Hopper's up front here at the minute. Uh, I'm trying to figure out, is that... There's Matt J with an effort. It might be Taylor, you know, that he's joined Hopper up front here late on. Let's have a look. Uh, subs were Hopper, J, Kazim, Bandera and Lawrence. So I'm not sure who it is that's playing up front there. I'm pretty sure we'd switch to a 5-2-1-2 at this point. Um, Matt Jay's kind of next to him. Difficult to tell. But we did definitely try two strikers up front in this game. All in all, it's our first out in. We shouldn't be too frustrated. The fact that we kept a clean sheet and picked up a point in our opening game of pre-season was a good workout for us. On to the next game and see if we can score. Here we go then for game two. And we are taking on Almere City. Um, these are a Dutch team. We actually started this game in a 5-2-1-2. And we had um, Jay as the central attacking midfielder. And then a strike partnership of Joe Taylor and Tom Hopper. Um, and that's no slight really on any of the players that played in the first game. This was literally just an experiment on my behalf with the formation. But also literally just to give these rotation players a chance and Joe Taylor as you can see here played through by Cameron McGeehan and he makes no mistake that's quite a clinical finish from the on loan striker um, the team that we're playing here the lineup that we selected for the second team Smith in goal uh, Bandera right wing back Fervrier at left wing back and then at the back three Lawrence Mitchell and Connor Hall and then you've got Reed and McGeehan in midfield with Jay as the cam and then Taylor and Hopper up front. So you can see within three minutes, um, I think it was Dallison originally who stepped up or Connor Hall who stepped up and won the ball just past the halfway line. And then it was played to McGeehan and it was a one-time pass through. Um, here, this was a bit worrying. The guy taking the shot, he just turned in front of the box and then just ghosted uh, Zach Mitchell who tried to get a foot in but look at this this was close Tom Smith in goal um, but like I said you know I, I I don't think I'll be doing this too often where the majority of the 11 are going to be rotated and left, unless they're really tired another chance here 35 minutes in Taylor for his second but he squares it to Jay and it's a great save what a save that is um, but we're playing some good counter-attacking football here. Um, this game was a little bit more open than the Volendam one. I don't know whether that's because they had the lesser players. I don't know. Um, but it felt a little bit more open. Chance there at the end of the first half for Van La Parra, but he puts it wide. Into the second half now. Here's Van La Parra again. Something of a danger man. In slides Reed. Then the shot. Good save from Smith. The referee's going to pull it back for a free kick. And a yellow card for Reed, which, looking at the replay, you know, it, it's a bit harsh because it's not like it's cynical. There's a genuine attempt to slide and then, you know, the ball goes the opposite way, so it looks like he gets something on it. Um, <clears throat> 20 minutes or so left. And here we are. Chance here as it's laid off for McGeehan. That's a great effort and a good save by the goalkeeper. Try to get it back in, but they get it clear. So every now and then you'll see that we're doing this big uh, hoof forward, especially when we've got 5-2-1-2. You can see uh, a Kindy wins the um, free kick. Um, and I did say that usually with 10-15 minutes left, we'll bring him on. Newby with the free kick, it hits the player and Greenidge tries to hook it back in but it's a save by the goalkeeper and once again, smashed forward this time Bandera gets his head to the ball Akinde shows his um, strength and wins another free kick uh, this time round, Newby's going to take the free kick again um, but he's going to hit the wall and then eventually it's going to come down the wing and um, going to be full time but, <coughs> like I said most of the action that we're going to try and create is going to come from the wings. 
but as it starts to get slowly creep towards the final 10-15 minutes, we are going to hoof it forward if we have, you know, two men up front that are, you know, one of them, maybe even two of them are target man, especially if you've got Tom Hopper and Akinde or Tovide and Akinde because that's a lot of strength and a lot of height up there. You might as well take advantage of it. We pick up the win 1-0. Let me know what you think. And so the final game is against PEC Zwolle. And hopefully we can remain undefeated so far. A draw and a win. And it puts us in with a chance of winning the International Cup, the pre-season. Which gives us extra money. We'd like to do that. Uh, but standing on our way is Zwolle. And here you see McGeehan. A nice little counter-attack. Just eight minutes in. Into Chilvers. He takes the touch which allows the defender to come out and try and put him off the goalkeeper ends up smothering that um, and then a few minutes later McGeehan tries chipping this up it's intercepted but look at how this ball falls to him as a uh, Fichtinger it's intercepted by Mingi and then falls through to Droif and tries to wrong foot the keeper but what a save that is from Owen Goodman he was diving the other way and ends up getting his feet to it a bit unorthodox but and then Fichtinger, it looks like he's got into the box with a lovely little dribble. And in comes Dallison and makes a great interception there. I think it was Dallison or Hall. They kind of look the same from a distance. And then lovely skill here from Tolvide into Edwards. Edwards is going to play this back. Literally uh, approaching stoppage time here. We are actually in stoppage time. Chilvers into Mandela Egbo on the overlap. This is a common feature. And then Tovide, lovely control, and smashes it in just before the halftime whistle. That's kind of what you want to see from us. Taking advantage of the fact that we've got a guy who's six foot two and 170 pounds. You kind of want to take advantage of that. And that's great control. It's on his left. I actually spoke about this in the first episode. If you've not watched that, go back and watch it. Basically, if he's on that right side and the cross comes in, as soon as he controls that and brings it down, just like that example showed, he's already on his left foot, smashes it in. And I think with the power and the technique that he's got, there's no reason why uh, we can't see some goals from Tovide. You saw a good example there of Edwards pressing and winning the ball. He crossed it for Tovide and um, the goalkeeper ends up making the save. We had more chances here in this game um, than I thought. And uh, Chilvers, Mandela Egbo, check out this chance. Hits the post, the goalkeeper with a late reaction, and then makes a kick save, save of his own. I couldn't believe that when it when it struck the post. Or why the goalkeeper didn't run to collect that cross, I don't know. That was a kind of a strange moment. Um, so Fortune on the computer side there. Then they come forward here, pulls it back, another low shot. And then look at this, great reaction save as Goodman dives down to prevent him from cutting it back. Great heroics from Goodman. He actually got man of the match in the first match when we drew with Volendam, uh, making some good saves. And uh, looking like he might get man of the match here as well. Tolvide into Chilvers. Chilvers going to pull the trigger. That's kind of what you want to see from him as well. I'm hoping that he bags at least 10 goals this season. Noah Chilvers into stoppage time. Ball's going to come to Gurlick down the right. He's going to pull this back. We know that they're going to pull this back. Joyf into Fist Garden. And then Thomas ends up shooting it over. And that is going to be the final action. So we win 1 0 again. We've scored two goals in pre-season, not the most entertaining, but considering we're against stronger opposition, I think those are tremendous results. And three clean sheets as well, we can't be uh, too complaining at that. Alright, so this is the final European Shield table. We didn't end up winning, Cambridge United end up winning on goal difference. Um, a little bit unfortunate, but still something to be f proud of going into the new season. Speaking of that, I'm going to be back in two days with episode three, where we'll begin our regular season games. Make sure you join me for that and smash the like button. Thank you so much for watching. This is our lad for Set Play Gaming. See you guys real soon.